now on stage will be Vicky, who will handle the sponsor recruitment session. Uh, Vicky, I think we are muted. Okay. Uh, thanks, Stefanos. So, hello, everyone. I'm Vicky. Um, this is a session where we bring in, uh, where we bring in along and give let our amazing sponsors to shout out about themselves and what jobs they have available. Um, and um, and this is an opportunity for all of you who are attending this session to ask um, companies questions. So um, how this works is each speaker will have five minutes and um, I'll set a timer. Um, and about 30 seconds before each speaker wraps, I'll pop, pop in uh, so you get a visual that you have 30 seconds to wrap up. Um, and uh, for uh, um, so for after each speaker, um, if you have any questions, uh, you can go to the respective um, sponsor rooms on Matrix or hand, head over to WanderMe. And if we have any time after the end of the session, we'll have um, a Q and A with everyone. Um, so um, first up, um, I want to bring up. Um, uh, Alex Lawless from Optifer. Uh, hold on, that's not that's the wrong Alex. Who? Uh, no, that's Alexis. It's Alex Lawless. <laughs> Do I click? Sorry. <laughs> yes, that, Alex Lawless from Optifer. Yeah. So I wasn't clicking. I was just, I'm holding my index card right now. It is all done magically. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, you are our Keystone um, sponsor um, for mm -hmm. the last and and this year you are. Uh, and, and you've been an Optifer has been sponsored for the last two years with it be amazing. So I will hand the floor to you if this uh, once the slides um, once you share your slides see yeah, I'll get see to if it's okay screen let's have a look let's see if I can find and it. I will get my phone ready with my five minutes start timer start. <laughs> right. I'll pop my I'll pop my head back in around thirty seconds so you have a visual cue that you have thirty seconds to wrap your your, right. your presentation. So you I'll leave much. you to it there. Um, this is Alex Lawless from Optiver. Yeah, so no, no, no pressure there for it being the first one up. Really proud to be a sponsor as well of, uh, of EuroPython again. So we are Optiver. We are a trading firm, a bit different to what you might think of from most trading firms. A lot of people think of things like investment banks. Investment banks dip in and out of the market as they see fit. They're investing on behalf of other people. They also tend to be a bit directional. So things like GameStop was, an, was a hedge fund and they wanted to go in a certain direction. With Optiver, we're known as a market maker. So actually what that means is we're using our own capital, our own risk, um, which is quite unique. We are non-directional. We're just trying to collate a lot of information to find out where we should price. And then we have to give the fairest price because that's the only way that we can trade. You have to have the best price. To do that, technology is a massive thing for us. So we are leading firm in this space. Systems play an essential role in how we trade. And our engineering teams work very closely with our traders to find this edge and, and make us competitive. The mindset's really important, right? So a financial exchange, let's say the London Stock Exchange, could change their infrastructure which for some would be, this is a problem. For us, we want the people to go, this is an opportunity. This can really make us something here. Where are we? Well, these are the two new locations. So setting up for the second half of this year is Austin and Singapore. Uh, last year, it was just these five. Uh, Amsterdam's where I'm based. That's our headquarters. About 500 of our 1,100 staff is there. But we also have Shanghai, Sydney, London, and Chicago. Um, we are English speaking, which is good for me, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, we will sponsor, we will relocate, we don't care where you are in the world, we just want the best people to come and work for us. We actually trade in about 50 different locations from Amsterdam, so Brazil, Canada, uh, North America, across Europe, um, but in terms of where you can be based to work, it's here, and I'm going to talk a bit more about Amsterdam because that's where we are. So trading equals technology, tons of cool facts here in, in my mind. Um, from the low latency uh, microwave lines to priority applications. What I really would like to talk about though is impact. So with Optiva, when you are building something, you can really see the impact within sort of three, six hours, as opposed to maybe when you're at a product company where it could be three, six months or more, and then a long time to build it. So what we talk about is you build it in the morning, it's trading in the afternoon. 
And that's really true. You can see the bottom line difference and get that quick feedback loop. So that's quite an exciting part of what we do. Um, so how do we use Python, the big elephant in the room, if you will? Uh, it is our second largest uh, programming language itself. Um, tons of different ways that we use it. Data is a really easy one. So it, it helps us with our APIs, but also to transfer this data. Again, this is very much related to Amsterdam, but there's 230 terabytes of data on a daily basis that comes across. Um, when CME opens up, we could have 35 million packets a second hitting our system. So there's a huge volume there. Nico Demarchi, I'm sure you, you're all aware of, um, he runs our Linux side. There's a thousand bare metal servers there or over that. It's a very complex environment. We talk a lot about not counting in five nines for uptime, but actually a fail hard environment as well, which I'm happy to kind of talk about. We have a thing called kill switch, which Nico works on. And then also our monitoring side. So this is really important. And I'm going to touch on our, on our jobs here. Um, so with our jobs, data I've touched on, the software engineering is kind of the Nico piece, but this trading kind of site reliability engineer, they'll be on this picture. They will be in the trading floor and they're really monitoring to see what's going on. They're optimizing, they're making sure things are working well, they're passing the data. And if they don't think we should be trading, then we pull from the market. So it's a really, really sort of important role that we have. Um, might sound pressurized, don't worry, loads of support. You don't need to have a finance background. Most of the people that join us do not. We provide a lot of mentorship. We have a course which is called Trading for Non-Traders. That trading for non-traders does allow people to um, really understand how we're building things, but also on top of that, we'll allow uh, you to actually trade for five days in a sandbox environment and see what it's really like. So that's quite a cool thing. My final thing is I think I'm running out, I've got 15 seconds or so. Um, we're looking for engineers, not executors. So a lot of people will execute and do what they're told. We think it's really important to find people who can engineer solutions, understand the nuts and bolts, and really come up with new ways of doing things. So that's what we're looking for. So hopefully uh, that's the end of the slideshow and, and that gives you a bit of a feel for what we do. Amazing, you finished right before time because uh, <laughs> that was pretty good, well-timed. Um, yeah, I had my uh, had my stopwatch, and I realised I talked extremely quick. Everyone, uh, it's okay. <laughs> I started mine like a few seconds after, so that's great. You have a timer, so maybe I should have told everyone to get their timers going as well. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so everyone, if you have any um, for a moment, um, in, in case we run out of time for this session, um, do pop over to Optiver, Optiver um, uh, sponsor room on Matrix, and in the lounge area, wonder me. Um, there's a Thank bit of a feedback. <clears throat> there's a bit of feedback uh, at the moment. So, um, but yeah, uh, let's on to our our. Uh, Thank you again, Alex, and to Optiver. On to our next um, speakers uh, from Bloomberg. Um, I think we have two speakers for this one, right? We have Joe and Burnett um, from Bloomberg who um, are this year's diamond sponsors. And Bloomberg has been sponsoring EuroPython for the last two years. So um, let me see, uh, do one of you want to share your slides? Uh, yeah, I can, give me one sec. And I'll get my timer restarted. And when you share slides, I'll start the timer and I'll leave the floor to you. And I'll pop my head up about 30 seconds before it ends, so you know. Uh, sorry, just give me one sec. No worries. Let me know if you can see that. Yes, we can see that. Okay, I'll leave the floor to you, Joe and uh, Burnett. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, thank you, uh, firstly, everybody for um, taking the time to listen. So um, yeah, my name is, is Joe. Um, I'm here from uh, from Bloomberg. Um, I'm, a, I'm a tech recruiter at, at Bloomberg. Um, I've been here for, for about a year now um, and look after hiring for, um, for our EMEA regions um, as well as um, teams over in Asia Pacific as well. Um, in, in a moment, I'll hand over to, to Bernat who can talk you through um, some information about, um, about his role and um, some of the kind of um, projects and kind of opportunities that are on offer here for, 
for Python developers and, and engineers. Um, I mean, for those who don't generally know what Bloomberg do, um, we are a, a kind of well, a, a fintech company. Um, we specialize in providing um, kind of financial market data, um, sort of financial tools, um, trading applications, um, and, and software. Um, on the other side of the business, we also um, provide, uh, we have a kind of news and, and media channel, um, but a lot of our business is focused around um, financial market data. Um, so to, to kind of summarize, we have um, a number of kind of opportunities that we're kind of recruiting for at the moment. We're, we're always on the lookout for um, excellent kind of Python developers, whether you're interested in building kind of client facing um, services and, and features, or if you're interested in kind of building kind of infrastructure, uh, tools, frameworks, and libraries that are used by our application teams, then we have a kind of host of, of opportunities. So um, I'm, I'm available um, kind of throughout the conference on, on Matrix if you uh, want to kind of message and hear, hear more about um, kind of opportunities. Um, and I'm sure Bernat also will be happy to kind of answer any sort of questions that you might have as well. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll hand over to, to Bernat who'll kind of talk you through um, some of the things from, from his perspective. Okay, hi everyone. Yeah, so yeah, I'm Bernard. I work at a company for a bit over five years now, and I work in a team called the Data Technologies Quality Control. And just to give you a kind of like also how Bloomberg is related to Python, we have over, on um, we hire over 6.5 thousand people globally. And out of that, I would say almost half of them are using Python in some shape or form. So for our, us as a company, it's very important that the Python ecosystem grows and it's actually, we are heavily invested in it. We are also, as might be aware, sponsors of the PSF and uh, we sponsor conferences too. And our goal is to make sure that not just our uh, engineers uh, can contribute to the community and make the Python better, but also that we make sure that our engineers are have the opportunity not just outside but inside the company and to achieve that we offer multiple ways for example we do encourage people to attend conferences to contribute projects outside of the company for example i'm a maintainer of the virtual event the talks project or the ppx but you can we have colleagues who are maintainers of other mainstream packages like the jupyter package or you might have heard of the pip package we have a maintainer in our company and we encourage people within our teams to not just do this as the side thing for them. We also often offer them uh, time during their work hours to actually help with maintaining these uh, fairly prominent projects. And just to give you a bit back, so what I do at the company, so for example, we are, as uh, Joe put it, we collect a lot of financial information and then we use that uh, financial information to represent it in other shapes and forms and sell it to our customers. And to do that, we, it's important not just for us to collect a lot of data, potentially millions of uh, data points every millisecond, but also to be able to make sure that the data we collect are good quality because the data that we present are actually used by people to make investments. So it's important that the quality of the data is of high quality. So for that, we offer to either heuristic tools to our financial analysts to express data invariant, but we also offer potentially more statistical machine learning, learning based tools for them, which allow them to automatically check if a value is correct or not. Okay, and we, beside this pipeline, is a lot of opportunity for us to use Python as a language to quickly collect a lot of data with high quality. We also use Python then to reshape this data and before reformulate in other shapes. For example, we offer tools for our uh, analyst, our users, where they can use Jupyter notebooks to dive deep into the financial data world and actually kind of like uh, come up with their own answers. What is a good investment? What is a good plan for them to go ahead? and also offer them more high level tools where they can kind of like have for example a map where they can see the oil tankers going throughout the world which also for example is a, another way to present the data which can make help them make good financial investment decisions because they get a better understanding not just what the raw data is but we also help them visualize it so they can actually understand it better okay right. That's great. 
Thanks, Jonah. Thanks, Bernadette. That's a lot of information packed in. <laughs> Time really flies. Um, so, oops, why? Um, so, hello, hello, Alex again. <laughs> uh, don't know what happened there. Um, so, um, yes, thank you again to uh, both you um, and Bloomberg. And so, so anyone have any questions? Um, uh, I. Uh, we, if we have time at the end of the session, as I said before, we will um, ask them here. Uh, but in the meantime, you can also pop over to um, their sponsor room on Matrix and in the lounge area in Wonder Me. I wish I had more people in Wonder Me just to get a good crowd going on there. So next up, uh, we will be we have a pre-recorded uh, video um, from Microsoft, who is this year's Diamond sponsors, and that they are our regular Euro Python sponsor. And uh, we have Guido who will be um, um, speaking in this video. So, um, so, uh, so yes. Uh, so, if we can just queue up that video, and uh, we can get started. Okay. Hello, I'm Guido van Rossum. You may have heard of me. I created Python. I've recently joined Microsoft. You've probably also heard of that company, and it's changed. Since I joined, I've started a project to make Python faster. In particular, my interest is speeding up the heart of Python, the bytecode interpreter. That's a challenging project for a couple of reasons. First, the interpreter is a very complex piece of software. And second, we want to keep all public interfaces backwards compatible, including those for C extension authors. That's the so-called C API. Everything we're doing in this project is open source. All our work is reviewed by Python core developers, and you can already see some results in the main branch of the C Python repo, which is destined to become Python 3.11 next year. We have open positions on our team at different levels. For all positions, we require a strong background in C or C++. We're working in C since after all, that is what C Python is written in as the name implies. One of the open positions is for a manager. The team is expected to, be, to stay small enough that as a manager, you can also contribute significantly to the team. In addition, we have openings at the principal, senior, and um, regular software engineer levels. Of course, Microsoft is committed to diversity and inclusion. Having people from different backgrounds work together drives our success. That goes for this team too. I should also mention that our team works fully remote and not just as long as the pandemic lasts. We currently have several positions up on the Microsoft Careers website, one for the principal manager slash engineer position, and several more for software engineers with various levels of experience. I want to encourage people of all experience levels to apply. Here are the links. Cool. Um, so that was Microsoft. So if anyone have any questions, um, head over to the sponsor room on Matrix. I'll repeat my, I'll repeat this at every, every part. And also um, head over to WanderMe as well um, for Microsoft um, kind of representatives. And you can talk to people there as well. So um, if Andy, um, Andy from um, Trayport is ready, are you all ready? Yep, yep, I'm all good. So, Trapor is our this year's gold sponsor. Um, it's been sponsoring EuroPython since 2019, and uh, we have Andy Ward here. And would you like to try? Would you like to uh, share your slides? Uh, yes. How do I do? That? I have I have a backup here just in case. Yeah. Um, I think you might have to do it. My computer's being a bit strange today. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and share this. Um, yeah, it's a PDF file here, so I'm gonna yeah. see what happens. Um, oh, few. Um, I have never shared on 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 this before either. So give me a sec. Uh, it takes too long, and it doesn't doesn't matter too much. I'll just talk through. Um, so I'm gonna. It's a p. It's a PDF file. I'm gonna or share. Can you see that? I think I'm sharing something. Ooh. 
Is that oh, okay? Well. Yeah. I'm gonna turn. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Um, if I, uh, I'm gonna remove myself from the stream, but I'm gonna. Hopefully, I can still. I'm not quite yeah. sure about. It. Or I'll. I'll just actually be here, and you keep talking. I'll mute myself, and you can tell me when to. Sure thing. One. Sure thing. We'll yeah. do. I think yeah, there's let's... only three slides. The first one is literally why <laughs> trade report. Um, the second one is is a legal disclaimer, I think, which was lovely put together by our legal division. So that's probably not going to be of interest to anybody, um, but it probably just has to be there. So I feel free just to go on to the final slides. Um, that would be absolutely fine. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, I'll get started. Well, thank you very much, uh, Vicky. Uh, thanks, everyone. I ho hope you're having a fantastic morning or evening, uh, wherever you are, and having a fantastic EuroPython. So my name's Andy. Uh, I'm the talent partner here at Trayport. So over the next sort of five minutes or so, I'm going to look to give you an insight into who Trayport is uh, and why it's such an exciting and attractive community for technologists such as yourselves to join and continue your pursuit of personal and professional development. So I can already kind of hear you saying to yourselves, who even is Trayport? Um, and you know, I've never really heard of them before. Well, don't worry. I've I never heard of Trayport prior to joining three years ago. So <laughs> literally, ninety five percent of the people I hire have never heard of us. If they have, they're either lying to me or they're from the energy commodity space as it is. So yeah, all good there. But hopefully, I can talk you through this in a little bit more detail. So. Trayport are essentially a fintech. We're a SaaS provider of energy trading solutions whose technology underpins around 80% of all power, gas, coal, emissions, and freight trading across Europe. Now, we have grown steadily and sustainably over the years from 180 people in 2018 to just over 360 and counting now. now we've acquired a number of biz key specialized businesses from across Europe and seamlessly integrated these into our business, which has enhanced our sense of community whilst promoting individuality and allowing each and every person to continue having a voice. So we now have offices in the UK, in Germany, Austria, Singapore, who are all delivering excellence to our clients on every continent, with the exception of Antarctica, of course, because there's nothing there. Um, I believe that we successfully navigated the global apocalypse, COVID-19 landscape, where many businesses were not as fortunate as maybe some of the others and people that you'll see today. You know, we strive to continue innovating and delivering excellence to our existing clients. You know, we've even built some new relationships. You know, we had the lowest attrition in our history, no redundancies, no furloughs, and we were able to hire you know, close to 130 new heads last year. So through a sense of shared purpose, you know, we each took accountability in our roles and by thinking bigger, by acting smarter and building better systems, we're in control of our future and it's looking pretty good. Uh, we've created a culture of engagement, which isn't easy and it is developed over time. You know, we encourage involvement, you know, recognizing collaborative working and championing individuality. There, there is no such idea as a bad idea. It probably just needs a bit of refinement, but no such thing as a bad idea. Your development at Trayport, both professional and personal, is really very much led by you as the employee. So not really sure what else to kind of say here, really. Uh, not too bad for a company that most of you have never heard of before, hey? Um, so in summary, it's, it's a place where our people are at the heart of everything we do. You know, they are key to Trayport's continued success. Now, it is a place where you will continue to work alongside like-minded and equally as passionate colleagues. You know, investment and trust will be placed in you to sustain your drive to keep learning, keep developing, uh, and all of this whilst working to make a difference uh, within the energy industry, uh, and but also, you know, being involved in solving complex coding challenges each day. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of selling it to myself all over again. Um, if you have any questions or you'd like to know more about us, then, you know, please visit our live roles that we have on the, on the job boards at EuroPython um, or head over to our chat room and booth where you can speak to members of our, our people and to find out more from them and actually speak to the people who are you know, living and breathing it each day. Um, alternatively, yeah, follow me on LinkedIn or something and reach out to me there. But yeah, that's, um, that's everything from me. So, well, thank you very much. And yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I think you might be on mute, Vicky. 
I am indeed. Too many things to <laughs> click. Thank you again, Andy, uh, for for uh, speaking and to Trayport, and um, and you've finished on time. <laughs> it's brilliant. All the sponsors have been finishing on time. So um, if you want to talk to uh, any questions for Trayport, um, um, you can find them a sponsor room on Matrix and Wonder Me. Um, and if you have any questions, do pop them in on Matrix as well. Um, if it, so, if we have time after the session, we will ask. We'll pop up the banners and ask the sponsors. So next up, we have um, uh, Alexis from Numberly. Um, uh, hello, Alexis. And hello. Numberly's our gold sponsor this year, and uh, have been sponsoring since 2014. Um, so as before, I am going to start my timer of uh, five minutes. Oh, well, I won't start it until you share your slides. Yeah, I'll start it now. And I'll pop up 30 seconds before you end. Um, so I'll leave this floor to you. Okay. Thank you, Vicky. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be with you. So I'm Alexis. I'm a CTO at Numberly, and I've joined the company 18 years ago. Um, as Vicky said, we are proud sponsors of... Uh, uh, Euro Python for many years now, uh, and as you can see, when it was uh, physically possible to be all together, and we had some great, great, great moments uh, there. So we can't uh, we can't wait um, to get back to to physically uh, be with uh, with you all. Um, so. Europe Python and Python in general is uh, is part of our DNA. Uh, it's important because we we, we like to stand uh, and and to be part of the the, the communities uh, that uh, we belong to. A little bit about uh, Numberly, uh, in case you you don't know us. Um, we are a Martech company, which is a contraction for a marketing technologist. Um, Basically, it means that uh, we help brands and companies to uh, create a digital relationship uh, with their customers or prospects uh, by all the digital means uh, at our disposal. So when I started in the, in the early 2000s, uh, it was emailing, uh, that was the thing, and then social networks popped in, and today it's like... Uh, audio podcasts or connected TVs, you name it. We are spread all around the world. So even if we are uh, a French uh, company at the start, uh, we grew to be an inter international one. Um, we speak English uh, all day long. Uh, everything we do and when we share between all of us uh, is done in English as well. So there's no point uh, in, uh, in uh, learning French, unless you really want to, to try to, to learn uh, this hard language. Um, we have a lot of nationalities, of course, uh, in, within, uh, within the company. We have a lot of technologies as well. We don't do uh, only Python, uh, obviously, um, but Python is our number one language uh, still uh, at Numberly, after English, of course. We are very proud to be technically independent. I like to say and remind uh, everyone uh, from the start, uh, meaning during the recruitment uh, uh, process as well, that uh, tech is made by people. And uh, that's all their own skills, their own background, culture, and differences uh, that make uh, uh, our technology uh, stand up uh, and, uh, and that has allowed us to, to, to face all the challenges that the evolution of all the digital ecosystems that we, we interact with uh, is doing very, very good. We are also very committed to open source. Uh, uh, a lot of us are uh, active contributors or maintain, even maintainers on, uh, on various open source projects. Uh, I encourage you to have a look at uh, our uh, our GitHub. Um, I, I think that proofs are better than just nice words from, from a recruiting session. So uh, th those are facts. Uh, just check them out uh, online. L look at what kind of things that uh, we are contributing. Um, and that's something that is part of our daily work. So uh, that's not something you have to do on the side. And then we like very much to share our production experience. Uh, we believe that uh, any kind of experience is, is something that uh, 
is worth sharing, be it good or bad, <laughs> actually. Um, so we have been giving talks at uh, EuroPython, of course, but also on other on, on other uh, conferences over uh, over the years, as you can see here. So yeah, we are regular speakers, um, and we like re very much to. To, to to share and discuss afterwards uh, what uh, what we what we learned or what uh, other people's experiences. So yeah, the list goes on, and and this year uh, we had some nice opportunities, webinars, etc. And we are giving uh, uh, two talks uh, this year at EuroPython. One was yesterday, and one is after the lunch break. So you want me? You, you might be interested in learning uh, from Tech for Good. That's it for me. Uh, we have open positions for software engineering, engineering data engineering, data science, uh, obviously, because we are a, a, a data company. So um, check them out uh, and come around and, and, and have a chat with us. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the conference. That is very dear to us here at Python. Thank you, Alexis. So um, that is... Um, um, all responses. Can we bring them all back on stage, please? Except for Microsoft, of, of course, <laughs> because that was a video. Come on. So, <laughs> so uh, we do have a question um, for Bloomberg. Uh, yeah, so um, at the moment, we, we unfortunately don't have any um, capability to hire completely sort of 100% remote roles. Um, to, to give some kind of context, our engineers at the moment are kind of making a, a bit of a gradual return to the office. So we, we're kind of operating sort of a hybrid setup, um, spending sort of two to three days um, in the office, obviously depending on, on location. Um, but yeah, if, if you're looking for 100% remote position. Sadly, we're, we're not in a position to do that just yet. Um, it might be something that we kind of review later down the line, but yeah, at the moment, um, no capability, I'm afraid. Okay, cool. Uh, I suppose uh, since um, this is probably the most requested question, I'll probably po pose that question for uh, folks here. I'll start uh, in the order um, that, uh, so I'll start with um, Alex from Optiver, like same question. Um, do you have any remote positions? No, not at this point. I mean, the, po the policy is uh, right now there is no policy um, in regards to kind of COVID and, and so forth. So there is some working at home currently. Um, going forward, it might change. I think we definitely have a hybrid environment of some description, but at this stage, there's no remote working. Um, as I said, that, that could change what ways we think um, or take to get the best people. Thanks. And let's go to Joe or Burnett. Joe, uh, same question. Do you have any remote working positions uh, for um, Bloom, uh, Bloomberg? Sorry, oh, no. I, I yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. You were. You just answered that question. So you do. So, I can frame uh, it another way. But. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm just going through the list. I have a text list beside me. I'm just going through the order. My brain is just going logically to one, two, three, four, five. And I'm not going to ask Microsoft because it's just a video. <laughs> so we're on to Andrew Ward uh, from Trayport. Same question for you. Uh, to, to be fair, very similar to to Joe and Alex, really, from Optiver and Bloomberg. We're our Vienna office is predominantly our sort of Python um, sort of development area. Um, and at the moment, there we don't really have capacity to go 100% remote. Um, our, our London office, which is more sort of C sharp side of things, does have more remote working at this stage. But yeah, we're we're doing a similar sort of hybrid activity based working model at the moment, a couple of days a week in for the time being. And finally, uh, Alexis, even though we just had you on I just said you speak and you had to rush through everything. Um so um I'll pose the same question for you since everyone got the same question as well. <laughs> Thank you. And and the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, we we are open to have a, to having people one hundred percent remotely. Uh, that's something we already do actually. And we have uh, one of uh, of our data engineers uh, that has uh, that is uh, connected from Taiwan. 
he moved from France to Taiwan, and um, and he's working 100% uh, uh, of the time uh, over there. He's uh, he's on uh, our uh, uh, Matrix channel. So if you want to share uh, uh, or to know about his experience at working remotely, even fully remotely at Numberly, you can have a chat with him. His name is Sebastian. So yes, we are open to this. Um, and uh, this is something that uh, we already do. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Um, so um, I don't know if there's any more questions from Matrix. I'm going to keep talking and wait because I see people typing on the channel there, Matrix. So I'm going to wait a little bit if there's any more questions. Um, but uh, I want to say, um, as people are typing, um, I want to say thank you to all of all of our speakers and uh, from all our sponsors. Um, it has been great to hear um, all the great stuff that you're doing and so many and the jobs as well. People have check out um, the, the sponsor um, channels are on Matrix. And uh, if you have a uh, if you want to have a chat one to one, seeing people in, in sort of virtual in person, head over to the lounge in Wonder Me. Let's pack Wonder Me because it's being really quiet <laughs> there. Um, I still see people typing, I'm not quite sure, uh, but I'm going to give another 10 seconds. Um, so, um, oh, there's one more question um, I'm just going to grab. This is one is for Alexis, <laughs> I think because of the previous, because of the previous quest question. So let me see. Is there any remote internship position this winter or next spring, Alexis? Yep, it can be done as well as an as an internship. Uh, it will also it, it sometimes depends on the type of contract that your um, that your school has, but um, we have done it multiple times. So sure, let's have a chat about it. It's a pleasure. So uh, for the person who asked that question, yeah, check go head over um, and have a chat. Um, with uh, Numberly um, at their sponsor room or at Wonder Me. Um, so if there's any more questions, I still see a lot of typing going on. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask one question while people are typing. Um, um, just as a very simple one. What's your favorite single, what's your single favorite thing working at your company? So this is given us um, for you here. So let's have a quick one, one liner from Alex from Octaver. Uh, what's your sing your your single favorite thing uh, working at Octaver? I'm, I'm a recruiter, so it's definitely down to the people. Um, I think for the engineers, it will definitely be the technical challenges. But, but I think for, for myself, it's the people, the interactions, uh, the collaborative environment like I'd put us up against any firm in the world on that side. So I think that's the thing I like. You can add value, but you can also share your ideas, you get challenged. So um, it's difficult to say one thing, but it, I think it all starts with people. Great. Uh, Joe, what about yourself about Bloomberg? What's your um, favorite single thing working at Bloomberg? Yeah, I, I think for me, it's probably um, probably the kind of culture of the organization. I, I guess that kind of piggies, piggybacks a little bit off um, Alex's comment there about the, the people. So I truly do believe we have a very kind of unique um, culture here at Bloomberg and different maybe to some of the other kind of large um, sort of tech companies. Um, you can be incredibly kind of impactful here um, and have ownership for some really kind of interesting projects and challenges. Um, we have a, a really intelligent group of, of people who work here. One of the greatest things I always say is that you never feel like you're the smartest person in the room and there's always plenty of opportunity to, to learn. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> and uh, same question for you, um, uh, Andrew from Treeport. Uh, what is your single favorite thing working uh, <laughs> there yeah, at Treeport? Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's difficult following through two other recruiters because it's, it just looks like I'm copying them now. Um, but yes, the people and, and the culture is really important. I think there is a lot of diversity uh, at Trayport across the various offices um, in skill sets, nationalities, genders and everything. And I think that diversity really, really works well. Um, in Vienna, we have a real diverse sort of background for people. So scientific backgrounds from physicists to, you know, top technologists to astronomers, mathematicians, etc. So there's a real there's a real mixture of people that you'll be working with through different backgrounds with different approaches and styles to you know, how, how, how to get things done. So I think um, 
that that's that's pretty cool that's something that's uh good to work with thank you andrew and finally uh alexis uh same question to you what's your single uh, favorite thing working at numberly and i think you can actually stay on because i think there's a follow-up question as well to you <laughs> from uh okay. from matrix i think it's uh benevolence uh between people which is uh very 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 important for us so i would just keep it at it cool and okay so um there is one more question so i'm gonna show i say this i was gonna say thought it was gonna be just for a uh, numberly but i think this is a general question um so i will if um so if I, i'm people can just jump in i won't actually point you out so if you want to answer that question just jump in <laughs> we can i, mean, I don't just... mind jumping in going in the same order again i think we're all probably going to say the same thing which is yes absolutely <laughs> uh, I, I think um for us what, what's important is the mindset and the engineering principles like do you do you truly understand what's underneath the hood how things really work that that's what we're looking for so it doesn't really matter where someone's background is um if you can demonstrate things along the same lines and understand how systems really work then that's right yeah and you I, i'd i'd second a second that as well i think you know it's it's we don't just focus on the technical backgrounds um so yes we like people that come from stem backgrounds um you know we have people that have <laughs> sports science um you literally find themselves in there somehow um but it's also we look at the the softer skill sets and basing it on those interpersonal skills now i think the role of software engineers as well as re recruiters as such has really moved on over time um and actually we need to be looking at not just reduce not looking at reducing the technical bar level of people coming in because we've got to be able to do the job but um to actually widening that search to looking at things which are skill sets you can develop you can't always teach so you know have been able to collaborate well with others you know being able to critical think um you know having passion for technology for the role you know potential for development and and that side so yeah similar to to to, to what what the guys said but um yeah we try, try to take in a little bit more than just the technical specs um we can teach you python and tech tech, tech markets essentially Thank yeah. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Andy. Yeah, um, so, sure. do we have? Uh, do you want to jump in as well? Who's, who's yeah, I can. I, I, yeah, go ahead, Joe. Sorry. So yeah, I, I can just say, and um, I guess uh, again to kind of follow up on that. Um, you know, we're we're a big company, and there are opportunities for um, all, all types of people from all types of background here, and we're genuinely passionate about kind of diversifying the organisation. So. By hiring people who have got you know the, the same background we're we're not kind of moving the needle in that sense so um for us yeah we're we're more than happy to kind of consider people from all types of um all types of industry all types of kind of educational um sort of background for sure yeah same here our ceos have phds in in marketing we have a lot of people uh, having or doing their phd in uh, even in physics and they're, they've been sharing their experience uh, inside i studied physics and i'm cto of numberly so yeah i guess that answers the question thank you thank you everyone so um this comes to the end of our session and um again reiterate what i said earlier i want to thank all our sponsors all our speakers from all our sponsors um who spoke and um and to everyone who joined the session and i do hope that everyone enjoy the rest of your python um this week so um thank you and bye bye